everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to ITS 350. Uh, so today, let's start with uh, just a look at the calendar and just to see where we are. So today is November 3rd, as you know, and this week we are doing the Pi Crypto demo. Okay, so uh, on Thursday, you, you have to do the solutions to this. So today I'm just gonna <clears throat> spend a little bit of time going over the code that remained from last week. And then after that, I'm gonna leave it open as an open lab, if you will, for you to ask questions any questions that you have about or work with your partner teammate or you know just groups of two um so that you're ready for remember for uh thursday where you will have a demo so it's a practical exam where you have to show a lot of those scripts so i need to make sure so i wanted to give you some time today to do that and then i also remind you that on november 10th we will have our, written ex our second written exam. So, you know, it'll be a comprehensive exam, which means it'll cover everything from the beginning of the semester up until basically Pi Crypto. And then on Thursday, November 12th, we will have the crypto practical exam. And this is basically, you know, from, I want to say from now, from four until a certain period of time that night, let's say like 10 or something. I'm going to give you to solve a specific problem. So remember, usually what I do is I hide a message within a whole bunch of encryptions. And so you have to be able to decrypt. I'll give you some instructions, obviously some hints, but you have to be able to decrypt and find the message. So this is, um, you know, kind of like a scavenger hunt. Okay. So that's the plan uh, for this week. So I've given you, I reminded you exam week from today, written exam, then the practical on November 12th, and the demos of the Pi Crypto Lab um, this Thursday. Remember that some of that Pi Crypto Lab could also be used in the practical exam, right? So make sure that you have both of these, um, you know, prepared. So today, uh, we're just gonna go over the last part of the code Okay, and then uh, after that, as I said, I'm just going to open it up for questions uh, and, you know, any problems that you might be having. So I'm going to navigate to GitHub, which is where I showed you that the code was located. So you should be seeing the GitHub, and then I'm going to click on the repository for cryptography. You can see that there. So in this uh, repository, we were looking at the RSA functions last week, right? And um, so you should be seeing this script. You can always download this code. Um, so we went over the generate keys, right? If you remember, we went over the generate keys. And then after that, we had um, the encrypt function. We have the decrypt function, which, which I've provided here already. Plus, there's also the sign function, which, you know, for digital signature, and then the verify function. You can see that there, okay? So, and then, you know, the function call. So, remember, you only call create keys once, and then you can, once you've done that, you can encrypt, decrypt, sign, and verify. So, this is really the only thing that I had left from that uh, from last week. So, I'm going to go over that, as I said. Uh, last last Thursday, you were supposed to run all these scripts. Uh, if you're having problems with them, you're going to have to share your screen today and show me what your problem is, that you've done something, um, you know, to, to illustrate this. But remember, you have to basically, all the questions I'm going to ask you on the demo on Thursday, I'm going to sit with every group for about, you know, five to ten minutes and or you know maybe 10 to 15 minutes each we'll see um and you will have to answer certain questions share information etc all right so let's just quickly go over the so i covered create keys so now let's go over the encrypt function 
All right, so uh, in encrypt here, what you do is, first of all, you read the, the input message, right? You can see that there. So this is your, just your text file. You read it in, into message, right? Then you close, then you do the same with the key. So remember with encrypt, you have to know if you're using the public or private key. I showed you last week those keys. Uh, then once you've read the key, you have to, let's say you have the key in temp string. Now you have to import the key into an RSA object called key. And then once you have that, you can just go ahead and encrypt the message. That gives you the cipher. And then because you're going to send the cipher to your friend, you're going to have to write it. So you can do, you know, create cipher.txt as the text file and then write it out to that text file. And then that's pretty much it. You send it to your friend. On the other end, uh, your friend then would grab the decrypt function, right? They need to grab the appropriate key given that they're receiving the message. So the, these are the things that you will have to stress to me, right? You know, okay, this is the key that I'm using. So that's why it's a demo. So the key is read. Okay, so you read the key here, you can see that. And now it's stored in key string. You also read the cipher, okay? Then you, once again, you take the string key and import it into the RSA object to create the object key. And now you can apply key decrypt to the cipher text. All right, if all goes well, you know, it prints out a plain text message. So it gives back the plain text message to you. All right, uh, then after that, um, so that's, that's the two functions for encrypt and decrypt, right? Usually that achieves confidentiality. So that should achieve confidentiality. Then over here, we have the sign and verify, and these are for authentication. Okay, so you have sign. So here, basically, you create a random number. Then you read, again, the appropriate key, depending on, you know, that you need for a signature. You take that into temp string. Right, you also hear then you can take the cipher or the plain text is up to you, but you read the message that you want. Then you take the appropriate key and once again, uh, you, uh, you can see here, you import it, you take the string key and import it into the RSA object. Notice also that in a digital signature, you have to do a, what is this? This is a hash, right? So we have to do a hash. Notice that you can do MD5, but you can do other ones as well. Uh, and then you update message, right? So the original message here, right? Whether it's plain text or, or cipher, you update it. And then now you have the hash number. And now the hash number is the thing that you're going to sign. So you can see that here. You have the hash and you sign it with the key. And that gives you the signature. Right, so because you're using the cipher here, you're achieving confidentiality, but remember really the signature is about authentication and integrity. So once I have the signature, I can print it out and then notice you store it into a, it's, it's really the signature is a tuple. So you grab the first element from the tuple here, you convert it to a string and you write it out to a text file called signature TXT. Then you would send that file to your friend again to achieve authentication and integrity. So on the other end, your friend then would take the verify function, right? You take the verify function. And the verify function then will grab the appropriate key again, save it as temp string. Then it'll, it will also grab the signature, right? It grabs the signature. Uh, which is a string from the file. And now it can also grab the cipher text, for instance, or the plain text message, either one that's appropriate. You create the same uh, MD5 object, you do the update, right? And then you calculate the hash once again, right? From the input that you receive from your friend. And then you take the signature and notice that the signature was a string. So you have to first convert it to a type of integer called long, and then you have to put it in a tuple. And that's why you, it's in this with a little comma here. And then the signature then is available, 
you then take the temp, the temp string, and once again, uh, which is the key in the string format, you convert it to the RSA object, gives you key, and then you just apply key verify to both the hash and the signature, and then you basically can um, corroborate whether this should return true or false to indicate if it authenticates or not. So basically it verifies the signature. Does this make sense, guys? Uh, yeah, I do have one question though. Go ahead, please. So uh, when, I, uh, when me and my partner were working on the uh, Pi Crypto Lab, one of the requirements was to uh, encrypt using the, um, using our, like our own private key. However, the Pi Crypto function for that throws an error when you try to swap the uh, the public and private key files. It doesn't like to use the the private key, so I don't know how to proceed with that. Okay, that's a good question. Um, so, in what scenario were you trying to run this? Uh, I I believe it was actually in the uh, encrypt file, the document you were just describing, and then okay, so you were you were basically looking at this script. Correct. And if okay. you go into the encrypt file, encrypt. if you if you if you swap out uh, the uh, the open public key.txt with like say private key.txt yeah. and it and then oh I it, see what you're saying. So you are encrypting it. here with the private key. Yeah, because the lab document said to do that. Like after you successfully encrypt with your partner's public key and they and successfully decrypt, it says to swap it. So use your private key and have your partner decrypt it with my public key, for example. But it throws an error when you try to use right. a private key. Uh, but I think, yeah, that what I mean is that, so the question should be, what are you trying to achieve? So what are, you, what are you trying to exchange? Are you trying to exchange a hash, an authentication, or a confidential file? So tell me that first. Um, it was a, it's a confidential text file. So, so you just want to send a, seek, a, a confidential file encrypted to your friend. Uh, I want to encrypt it using my private key so that way they can verify that I'm so the, the only I could have encrypted it. Authentication then is what you're trying to achieve. Correct. So, so which one is it though? Confidentiality or authentication? Because you Authentication. Okay. Authentication. All right. So I think what happens is remember that RSA does not work really well with long messages. And in particular, it does not like when a message is longer than the key. Okay. Okay. So, so you think that might be why it's it, a yeah, so it does an error? It, so, so it doesn't like that, right? So really, if you want to achieve confidentiality, what is the appropriate thing to do? Oh, well, you would want to um, encrypt it with, uh, like, say for me, I would want to encrypt the file with my partner's public key, so that way only them, they can decrypt it with their private key. That makes sure right. nobody else can. But if it's them. a long message, that's gonna be that. First of all, that's not a good approach because if it's a long message, longer than the key, it's not gonna like it. It doesn't work very well. So really, RSA is is basically good at exchange at at, at encrypting things that are shorter than the key okay mm -hmm. so then what this so based on that and based on your understanding of everything that we've talked about how should you achieve confidentiality if not the message then what is the alternative are you talking about breaking it into blocks and then encrypting the, the blocks with? Well, that's what we said, right? That whenever we want to try to achieve confidentiality, especially of a long message, we should use symmetric key encryption. So encrypting the, uh, the symmetric key with my partner. Exactly. That, so that's where I was going with that. So uh, th this is an important question. It's usually the one question that students still have when they understand everything else, right? Is that... Mm -hmm. You should not try to encrypt a long, if you encrypt a short message, it should work, right? Right. But, but if you're trying to encrypt a longer message, you know, RSA is not um, really made for that, right? It's, it, 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 it works better when you're encrypting a, a message that is shorter than the key. And usually 
then a symmetric key will always be shorter than the RSA key. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And so that's what you should exchange, okay? When I say confidentiality, and you could encrypt it with RSA, you know, you could just say the cat is sleeping, right? And you encrypt that and you send it to your friend and it might work because it's a short sentence, but it's still not technically what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. And I, like, I, I, I understand that. I was just more so because in, in question five of the document, I, uh, mm -hmm. I pulled it up. It just says, uh, then encrypt the message with your private key. So your classmate can decrypt the message with your public key and yeah. verify that it came from you. Right. So that's so why we're trying to swap to, it. No, I understand. You don't have to do it like literally. Okay. Right? What I say there instead, you have to do based on the principle. So let me, are you guys seeing? Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me go to the document, right? And you're talking about. Yeah, that one. That one. Okay. Let's take a look at the wording of it. Which one is it? Uh, number five, part C. Okay. Yeah. So public key create, public private key, send an encrypted message to a classmate, classmate via email. Use your cl classmate's public key to encrypt a text message and then email it as an attachment. The message should include the name. Yeah. Only your classmate will be able to decrypt the message. Right. So as I said, if it's a short message, um, it'll work. Right. But really, although I said that the right thing should be what I just explained, really exchange the key. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now in C you say then encrypt the message with your private key. Your classmate can decrypt the message with your public key and verify that it came from you. Right, yeah. but that, that's not literal though. That's not a, in a literal sense. Instead, what you're going to do here is that, that's why you have that sign and verify. That's really where that is. Those two functions are the ones that do it, okay? So what you do here, when I say encrypt the message with your private key, I'm basically saying achieve authentication, right? That's really what I'm asking. And okay. then your classmate can decrypt the message with your public key, which is true, and verify that it came from you, right? However, the way that you should do it correctly is by using the, these two functions. That's why I've given you sign and verify. Do you agree? Yeah, I see, I see what you mean by that. Because this one, see, you were trying to do, you were trying to do encrypt with the private key, correct? Yeah, and it was throwing an error when you try yeah, to read. But it, that's equivalent key. to doing sign, and there you can see is the private key. Gotcha. You see that? Yeah. So, so you're just saying that we need to sign. Uh, we have to. Use, we have to sign the document. And that's kind right. of the same so, difference. So, yeah, I use the different vague wording, but what I'm trying to tell you is, in one achieve authentication, in the other one achieve confidentiality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying because it, it, it's you're accomplishing the same thing. It's just you have to do it through through this method because that's the the right it's, way to do it. It's, it's, it's exactly the same one. Uh, it's just it, there's a specific function for sign. Gotcha. No, I, the, I see but, what you mean. But th the theory, like the like the understanding that you have of it, is correct. It's just this is an implementation of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. The other thing is, as I said don't actually encrypt the whole message because it could be pretty big. I don't know what you're sending your friend. Instead, what do we encrypt here? The hash. The hash. What did we learn about hashes? Hashes are pretty much unique, right? Mm -hmm. uh, always, almost, you know, almost completely unique. There might be some collisions, but it's very rare, right? So, so usually then a hash will be unique for the document that you're sending. So if you sell, send the same, the exact same document, you won't have a problem. Make sense? So if you notice, we are not actually, it, it, in, in, in the terms of the Word document, we're not actually encrypting the, dot, the plain message or the cipher with the private key. We are encrypting the hash of that cipher or plain text with the private key just so that way we can verify authentication. That's right. But it's the same thing though. Yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's the exact same thing as you understand it. 
It's just that we don't actually sign the, the document itself. We, can o we, we only need to sign the hash because the hash will be unique to the document anyway. And we can do a hash of the cipher or a hash of the plane because you know that you can, you, you, you can do that. You can layer it, right? Right. And then just use the sign function. The sign function is there. So I gave you this code so that you didn't run into those kinds of problems. Gotcha. I think it was just the, the, the wording from the lab document that was. Uh, yeah, no, I, I get that. Up. And then also keep in mind. So don't take the, the word document literally. That's I, I do want to stress that at the end of the day, those were just examples of the types of questions I can ask you. Right. But really what you need to understand is get those principles 100 percent correct. I can help you with the code if you got the ideas correct. You see what I'm saying? Well, I've given you the code. I mean, literally this code will run. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, see, I see where you're coming from with it. That, yeah. that definitely clarifies things. <laughs> yep, and then uh, there's a few little coding things like here, this has to be a tuple and things like that. Just, that's just, remember, it, this is someone's implementation of the actual algorithms and the math behind them okay but it you know it's got its own little um little things um one thing one important thing though as i said is that you want to keep those messages pretty short or otherwise if you're sending a long message you really should be the only thing that you should be encrypting for confidentiality with rsa is the symmetric key and that's why i also gave you examples of des and aes if you remember right but the, great question. That's an excellent question. So does this answer your does this answer things? Because if you look at verify, then what do you use for verify? You're going to use uh, uh, my public key. So the uh, public key, right? Yeah. And that's basic. And then you take whatever the message is. And so in theory, you, you're going to take now. You're going to reverse the process, right? Mm -hmm. So it's basically what you understand is just that. There, at, there is actually a function called verify that just returns true or false. So we're in, we notice we just verify the hash, right? Right. So take that hash again from the plane or the cipher, verify that against the signature, which you have to send to your friend. Okay. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah, so you're, you're just looking for the general concept. It doesn't have to be specific to That's right. The document. You don't have to do literally the things that I said there. You just have to do the, you just have to understand how to, when I ask for confidentiality, when I ask for integrity, when I ask for authentication, using all these code examples. Okay. And the code is provided. Just, just use these. I mean, you don't have to modify them at all. I don't think. You just make sure they run, I, I think. Yeah, I think they were all uh, working. Okay, good, good. That's excellent. Any, uh, any other questions, guys? So as I said, you know, our demos are on uh, Thursday. So really, you know, right now is your time to ask. If you're having problems with something, you need to ask now because um, we're going to do those. All right. So I'm getting another question. It says, so when I say, so when I say encrypt a message, so think about what you're saying there. Message means to me some secret information. Let's say, you know, um, buy the stock at $500 a share right now, you know, some, something secret that you're trying to say. So you're saying, so when you say encrypt a message, you actually want us to encrypt the hash instead and send that to our partner instead of a message. Well, see that question is confusing because it depends on, I will not, I will always ask you a question in terms of the principles, right? What were the principles of information assurance that we learned at the beginning of the semester? What were they? Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality, integrity, availability. What else? You're missing a few. 
non-repudiation and authentication. There you go. Right. So, so those are the five principles really. So when I ask you a question, I'm really asking which pillar I will always tell you which pillar I want you to achieve. So that's the problem with the question you're asking me. So when, when I say encrypt the message, you actually want us to encrypt the hash. So what would happen if you just send the hash of a message? What, what pillar is that? Integrity. Integrity. You see that? That's integrity. So, but, but if I ask you, no, I, I want you to send that secret, right? But I don't want Zelda to read it as a man in the middle attack. You know, what does that mean? It means that I want confidentiality. What if I want the message to be authenticated? Then how do I do that? Yes, you sign it. What do you sign? You sign the hash. The hash. You don't have to sign the entire document. And in fact, as I just explained, you will not be able to with a really large thing, right? It's not practical. And the algorithm RSA is not really for that. We saw in the performance lab, first of all, that it's not, um, it's not very fast performance wise. So remember just, you want to watch your Netflix movie right now, not two hours from now. And then the other idea is, um, it, it, the algorithm is really not for that. The algorithm has some, without getting into too much of the details of, of the math, it's not really designed for that. Okay, but it's designed really well for small things. And so as long as we, and that means we can send the symmetric key or the, or a hash. So now I ask you the question. Let's say that I asked you, um, I want you to achieve confidentiality when you're and send a secret message to your friend, but achieve confidentiality. What are you going to do then? Encrypt it. Sure. How? <laughs> How do you encrypt it? Okay, but okay. So this person says, I'm gonna encrypt it with my public, my friend, my partner's public key. But what if it's a really large document, like an encyclopedia or something? What do you do then? You're gonna to wanna to do what we talked about earlier with encrypting your symmetric key. With, symmetric key, uh, right? With your uh, partner's public key instead, transmit exactly. the key and, and then use that key to encrypt the larger message. Exactly. And then that key can be used with AES or uh, DES or whichever one, you know, you have there. And then you achieve, would you achieve confidentiality that way? Is it totally secure? It is right. It should be. Yeah. yeah I mean, here in here in this context, we're assuming that DES and AES are equally secure. We've already talked about how AES is the secure one, but you know, as far as we're doing it right, then we know we can just replace, you can literally just replace, replace DES with AES in your, um, in the script that I gave you. Also remember, I noted that in the book, the example that they use is the AES one. So you can just use that one instead. And, uh, CBC mode of operation, right? Not ECB. And you should understand that as well by now. Does this make sense guys? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing we've been doing all semester, but you know, I, I found that I kind of want to do this this way. Um, this, you know, to stress this concept, because I've noticed when you, when you do it with someone else, it gets a little bit confusing. So this will basically tell me things. As I said, don't worry about the script so much. I can always just kind of help you there. However, these scripts, first of all, will work right off the way they are. And secondly, uh, you know, hopefully you use Thursday and you will use today to ask any questions. By the end of today, at, you know, at we end the class today, Everyone needs to be running these scripts. They should be running, okay? And, and if not, you need to let me know 
and either Mitch or myself can get you uh, going with that, but you have to be ready for Thursday. All right, so I have another question. It says, All right, so there's a, several questions here. How will the demos work? I am hoping if you guys are prepared, it shouldn't take more than 15 minutes per group of two. It shouldn't take more than that. Uh, some groups might take, I, I mean, it's, it's just a few questions, right? It's just really, you know, show me authentication. Show me availability, or sorry, um, not availability. Uh, show me authentication, show me confidentiality, show me integrity, right? Should be pretty, but you need to demo it, you know, really quickly. If I see that you're understanding everything and you're not like saying confusing things, I'll know that you, you're on top of it. Also, I'm gonna do on a first come, first serve basis. So whoever wants to go first can go first. Um, so that's how will the demos work? And, and basically, I'll just say, you know, can you guys share your screen, one of you? And then um, I'll ask, you know, okay, please show me confidentiality. Send up, and I, I might say, so what I might say is, and what you might imagine that I will say is, go to your plain text message, change it to, you know, uh, you know, the, the dog is running, you know, I'll just give you some sentence. And then from that, I'm just going to say, okay, now confidentiality, now authentication of that, now integrity of that, you know, and so on. Right. Okay. Then the other question is, will we go through each number on the document and just run the code? No right? It's not going to be like that. It's, as I said, those questions on the, on the handout are more like hints on how to study, but um, the question will most likely be, as I just said, I'll make up a different sentence for every group, probably your names. I mean, I'm, I'm not very creative, so <laughs> just going to plug in your names in there or something like that, just to kind of change it. And then I'm going to ask you the, the same questions. Then... Is the code you gave us good to run for the practical exam or do we have to alter the code to meet the requirements? So for the practical, I assume you mean not these demos, but what we're doing the Thursday after the written exam. So um, the what do you call it? Uh, oh, so I, so the student says, no, I mean the code for this Thursday. So what is, is the code you gave us good to run? I mean, you have to run it, right? So if you, if you ran it and it runs, then it runs. Um, but the point is it should not give you any errors if you understand what you're doing, right? So I provided the, the, some private and public keys there. You should generate your own. You should generate, I mean, it's really, you should generate a plain text message. Then it's gonna generate the cipher. You can create the keys, public and private keys. So that's really all that's involved. And then the signature will be generated as well. Uh, so as far as the, the, let's see, what's the other question? So, uh, so on the day, yeah, it, on the day, we're going to do um, either breakout, breakout, as you guys say, breakout rooms, or we will do just, I'll, I'll say to you guys, you know, we'll come in on Thursday and I'll ask who wants to go first and I'll give you a, a time window, you know, like, let's say you got 15 minutes. So everyone else will sign off. So we'll make a schedule. So it'll say, okay, at, from now to nine or what is it now? Four, right? So from four, to 420, this group, 
then from 420 to 435, this other group. And so we'll either do that or we'll do breakout rooms. And then you guys can just be there, but I'll be, doing, I'll be going into each individual group. Make sense? Yeah, sounds good. So, that, so did I answer everyone's questions? I mean, all great questions for sure. And you know, this would be a, a lot easier in the, in, the, um, in the lab, obviously, but you know, we got to do this. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> all right, do we need a microphone for the demo? Yes, please, because if you're writing things on the chat and everything, we're just going to communicate very slowly. And, um, you know, time is of the essence, right? I don't have that much time for this, so. Please have a microphone. You don't have to have a camera, but you need to do two things. You need to share your screen so, I, so you can demo and I can see it. And you also would have to speak just so that it's easier uh, for, for us to communicate. Both both the people in the in the group, both the partners would be in the same session for sure. Yes, uh, I think what he was saying was, do, oh. do both people in the group uh, can just one group member share their screen, or oh, do you yeah. have to do I the just, demo twice? Kind right, of I, that's one one advantage, one thing you have in your advantage, right? So only it's a it's a partner thing. I will ask questions to both. So I may, you know, the person that's really quiet, staying in the background, I, that may be the person I start asking questions to uh, about the understanding. Because I, you know, just by listening to you talk, I'll, I can kind of get, get a gist of, of where you are. Um, but yeah, only one needs to demo because you're working together, I assume. So, um, so if one understands something a little bit better than the other, make sure that you, you show them. And then, but everyone should understand all the concepts. Gotcha. Okay. Let's see. Another question is, OK, so you, uh, yeah, so the question is, so you need to be, remember, you need to be more flexible. It's not about me, about just running the code I gave you. And if you, it's about understanding what you're doing, right? That's really the key. Uh, so you need to know when, when I say authenticate, okay, you need to know what to do. Okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 these are the files. And if you explain it really well, I don't even have to ask you questions. I'm, li I'm literally going to let you guys talk and if I, if everything you say sounds right, you might not get questions. Okay. As I said, it's only very few little simple ideas, right? It's not that extensive. So how would this like be graded? Like the more questions you ask, basically like the more points we lose in a way since we don't know or, or how? Is it no, good? it's not like that. It's really about you just, you have to understand authentication, uh, integrity, confidentiality, right? Yeah. And so you just have to show that you understand those concepts. Okay. It's not so much, as I said, the code or, but it, but if I'm, if I'm clear that you, you get the, the ideas. All right. All right. Makes sense. It's not like I'm going to give you 10 questions that are strictly these 10 questions or anything like that. It's more, I'm going to get a feel for, for your understanding. So, uh, so I'm getting now a different question about a review for the written exam a week from today. What I can say is comprehensive exam, very similar to the previous one, very similar, uh, comprehensive, and uh, which means everything. And then if you, it, it's just everything really, labs, lectures, It'll involve understanding of, remember, you don't have to write Python code. I'm never going to, I'm not asking you in this class to write Python code, but I will ask you maybe to write pseudo code, right? So for instance, do you understand DES, right? Did you understand the Feistel network? 
you know, I could give you another problem like the Feistel network. I'm only looking for an understanding of your, that, 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 that it's making sense, right? That it's making sense how encryption works. You know, I don't want you, you know, if you work for a company, you will most likely buy an encryption solution. But at the same time, when somebody comes in and they tell you, oh, I, we have this amazing algorithm and it's the most sophisticated in the world. But then when you really start to ask questions about what they have exactly, you realize, hmm, that sounds a lot like OpenSSL. <laughs> so what exactly are you asking me to pay a lot of money on? You know what I mean, guys? Right. It's just so that way, if you understand it better, you can kind of have a further grasp if you're having to purchase any encryption. Exactly. Exactly. You're, you're never going to write your own RSA for a company. That's not recommended at all, right? Because you've seen the code is complex and you know, you don't want to do that. Usually you're going to use a proven tool, but at the same time, if, if you don't want to, you know, you don't want people selling you magic beans. <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to actually know, and, and so you should at this point, hopefully after the class, have a good understanding of how all of this works. You know, there's open SSL, you know, there's Python libraries, you know, which keys you have to use that achieve guaranteed security. So you should be good to go. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Um, so any, so ask questions. So today is really, as I said, just the questions day, uh, make sure, it, you know, one thing I stress very strongly, you've heard some students already, they've ran the code, it works, they've installed the libraries, it works. On Thursday, you can't say, you know what, I'm running this code for the first time, and it doesn't run. Or, I ran this Wednesday, it didn't run, and now I'm here, and I don't know what to do. You know, Basically, that's, that would not be the thing that I, I would be expecting from you guys. I would be expecting that my code runs and I can run it and it does things so that I can actually get to ask you the questions that I need, right? Which is, okay, please, you know, the car is going really fast. Please provide, please show me how you would uh, send this to, from, to your partner and achieve authentication. So, so let's, run, let's run the scenario, right? So I don't know who wants to volunteer, but somebody please volunteer. And let's say, you know what? Let, let's actually do the whole, this is how I would do the exam, right? I'm gonna do it in words. And then, and so you can see, let's say, okay guys, um, you know, what did I say? The car is going really fast. Write that, write that sentence into a text file. Maybe the text file that you call, um, what do you call it? Um, input, input message. Yeah, input message.txt. So you write it in there. The car is going really fast. Now I'm going to ask you a, se a series of questions. And I might ask them in, 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 in order, you know, or not. So uh, send, send that message to your friend and achieve confidentiality. How do you do it? So who wants to take that? Well, since it's a short message, we should be okay to just use a uh, regular RSA public and private key. So you can just encrypt it with your partner's public key. So that way only they can decrypt it. But that's only because it's a short message. If it was a longer one, we'd have to use uh, transmit our symmetric key in order to do it. Okay, so you would send the key and then you would encrypt with that key and you can send both of them along, right? You can send the key actually encrypted already and the message already encrypted and they can decrypt both, right? We saw a scenario like that on the, on the slides. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what about now I say, you know what? I just want you to achieve, you can send the message, plain text, it doesn't matter, but I want you to just achieve integrity. What do you do? If you're just trying to achieve integrity, uh, you can just uh, compute the hash um, of the document, sign, uh, sign the 
uh, encrypt the hash, sign the sign it, and then have your partner verify it. Oh, but that but that's see what you just said is for authentication. I only ask for integrity. Mm. So just the oh, then just com uh, comparing the give your partner the hash of the document, have them compare it, right? Right. right? You agree yeah. that I mean that's yeah. correct, right? Yeah. Now I'm I'm gonna say now okay. Um, now I might make it harder, right? And I say, okay, guys, um, you know, the, the boat, the, the, no, the fisherman is on the lake, right? And I give you that sentence. Now I want you in one single email to achieve all principles. How do you do it? So that means I want you to just send one email, right? But that email would achieve, would send that message, the, the fisherman is on the lake, and it would achieve confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. How do you do it? With just one email. I mean, I, I can change the questions like that, right? Just, you know, so how would you do that one? Um, kind of combining what we were talking, uh, the couple things we talked about earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to attend, to achieve confidentiality, you would need to uh, first encrypt your symmetric key, send it over along with your encrypted document, because then they can encrypt or decrypt both. I mean, sorry. Yeah. Um, so that would achieve confidentiality. You can also include the uh, the encrypted signed uh, or your signed hash, so that way they can verify the integrity of it, because they can always mm -hmm. just compare the hash. Mm -hmm. of the uh, encrypted document with the uh, hash that you sent in the email. Right. Um, you can... Uh, and, and the key thing is, the key thing is that the thing that you sign or the thing that you, you sign a hash and the hash that you generate is not the hash of the plain text message, but it is the hash of what? The cipher. The text. cipher. Very good. Exactly. So you're sending the cipher, you're sending the key, which is encrypted with a public key of your friend, right? And so in one single email, you can achieve all principles, correct? Correct. Now it's okay to tell your friend, oh, by the way, I'm using, you know, I'm, I'm definitely using AES CBC. That's okay. You know, that's not, you know, that's something that's known. It, it, you rely on the security of the, the algorithm, right? Not on uh, secure, what is called security through obscurity of just like, trying to hide, you know, the, the things. You can tell them those things. Um, you just don't give them the keys, obviously. All right, somebody, at, oh, it's, no, somebody just said verify, but I don't know what, uh, what they're answering. All right, um, yeah. So does that make sense, guys? Yeah. All right, so, so that's the idea, okay? So, so it's exactly like that is usually how I do the exam. I just make up a sentence. Um, in your group, whatever, put your, put, it, put your name in there just to kind of have you start from somewhere. And then I just, and usually when I, when I feel that you're really good, um, that you get everything, I just give you that last question. Achieve everything in one email because if you, if you answer that correctly and you demo it correctly, you've covered everything, right? That's pretty much. So be ready. I mean, the thing is be ready for that. It's okay if you've already kind of thought about it. I mean, that's why I've given you this code and a lot of time to, you know, but the key thing is make sure these work, right? That these run for you. If, if you're having errors and, you know, because remember, I don't have that much time to, to um, for, the, for the demos because there's a lot of groups, okay? Is there a group that wants to go first? I mean, you can tell me now if, you, if you'd like to go first now or you want to wait, you know, I mean, you have to go, <laughs> so, but and as I said, I think 10 to 15 minutes should be enough if you're ready and if you know that I'm just going to give you a sentence to put an input message, then you can do all the other things. You have all the scripts ready to go. So definitely have them ready. Don't just like start building, you know, have your VM ready and everything. But otherwise we can just uh, uh, pick the groups on, 
Thursday. That's fine too. Now the, the, the exam on a week from Thursday, that's going to be a little bit more tricky, but obviously I give you more time for that. And it's not a demo for that one. You will just submit a report. It's also, you know, as I said, a scavenger hunt. So you're really, you know, I just look at, did you give me the secret sentence, right? Because what I might do is I might have multiple files and I might put on my website like multiple files and I'll just say, you know, uh, randomly assign a file to some students and then other students will. So you're not all going to have the same message is, is what I'm saying. So uh, each, each one will have a, you know, I'll, I might create like 10 files and then I'll just say, oh yeah, for you, you have to do B and you, you have to do D, you know, that's so that, you know, so that all of you have to give me what letter I gave you and then what I'll know if you found the message or not. Does that make sense? Yeah, so we're going to have time in class and then even after class. Yeah, so that that exam, uh, the, the one a week from Thursday will be, so this class start, starts at four, right? So usually I think I give you guys until 10 that day. So you'll have, so, I, so that day that, you know, as soon as four o'clock, you can start working on it. I'll be there for the, the two hours. If, uh, if you have any questions, you can just, you know, I'll, I'll, get, on, I'll get on the thing. Uh, but I give you until the end uh, until 10. So it's, it's a one night. I think we've done an exam like that, I believe. So it's a, it's a one, uh, that same night it's due. So I'll allocate time, right? From four to, to 10. I know some of you might have another class or you might have like uh, something. So that's why I give you a little bit of time to accommodate. I think uh, realistically that, that, exam could be done in, in, in the lab period, but given this whole COVID thing, um, I'm just, you know, right now, usually I would be there in the classroom just for the two hours. Uh, yeah, so some of you have class at six, right? So some of you are saying that you do have class at six and that's why I'm saying, you know, work on it from four to six, right? I'll be there. And then after that, you have until 10 to submit. Make sense? But it's not that long. I mean, it's not incredibly long. It's going to be scripts. I might give you another, a couple other scripts as well to help you out. But at the end of the day, as I said, it, it's, I might change the order of the steps that I use to encrypt the file. And so you, you know, by understanding what you're doing, you will be able to, it's like unwrapping layers of an onion, right? So you know, one layer of the encryption, another layer, another layer, until finally, and I might be hiding keys inside layers and layers. And then when you find a key, you know, I'll, it'll give you maybe, you know, all right, now use symmetric key with this, you know, something like that. Make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay. So that's, and then after that, you know, we're kind of, I think, you know, after those, those are the exams, you should be done then. Fun, really. I mean, it should be fun. I think students really liked it the last time I've done it. So. All right. Uh, any other well, questions? You said something about, yeah, you said we have up until 10, like 10 p.m. or November 10th. No, it would be for, for, for which one? For that exam, the, the one a week from Thursday? Yeah. No, no, no. It's first of all, that date. Oh, wait, a week from Thursday. Yeah, that's not even the 10th. Yeah, because th that's actually, that exam is on the 10th, isn't it? Uh, on the written exam is on oh, the 12th. Yeah. Well, so the, 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 that practical exam that we're talking about, the scavenger hunt, if you will, that's on the 12th. And so it'll start at four. You have two hours. I'll be there in the, so if you have any questions. But then after that, it's due at 10 o'clock that night. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Question? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Pretty good questions. Any other questions about anything? You can ask questions about the review. If you have any questions for the written exam? Questions about the code? Anything else you want me to explain? 
Uh, not for me, at least not at the moment. All right. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the at this time the um, the recording.